Hello guys, what's going on? Welcome to Accelerate. My name is Stone and this is our fifth episode all about combo boxes. But before we get started, I saw at the time of this recording we've got 69 um, subscribers. Thank you very much. So if I can get to 80 subscribers on this video, I'm going to leave my files in the descriptions down below. Once again, I've put a poll on Facebook and the winner for this episode was the combo box. So welcome to episode 5 combo boxes in VBA. So what is a combo box? A combo box is one of the options in VBA that you can choose and it will give you a little drop down list where you can choose an option and then it puts it into the combo box. Quite exciting stuff and I'm very excited to code with you today so let's get straight into it. So I'm here on my desktop and I'm going to create a new Excel file and I'm going to call it combo box. So I'm just going to go into our spreadsheet that we just created. So for the guys that's starting out VBA coding, um, I'm just going to quickly show you how you get the developer tab open as well. Uh, so you will see I've got the developer tab open here. I've also explained it in my previous videos, descriptions above, and you go to file and you will go to options and then you're also going to go to customize ribbon and you're going to tick the little developer box here and if you press ok the developer tab should come up this side here all right so let's get into this nice uh, spreadsheet here so i'm just going to call sheet one my home tab and I'm just going to add a additional one that will say combo box menu. So this is where we're going to populate our table now here, our little uh, matrix. So let's say we're a shop owner. We uh, buy and sell bikes, for instance. And we're going to try to replicate this in our VBA combo box exercise. So first of all, let's start off with a product category. Then we're going to go in, we just double click on that little uh, cell there to space it out nicely. Then we go for in B1, we're going to go with a subcategory. And in cell C1, we're going to go with a product code. And then just to make things interesting, we're going to go uh, with a but we said we're going to do a bike shop here. So let's say we've got bikes. Our subcategory, let's go for uh, colors. We've got a red bike. And let's say for product code, we've got two types of red bikes. Uh, one for uh, smaller children and then one for adults. So let's say we've got red bike one and red bike two. We're going to follow the same logic. I'm just going to copy and paste it from B2 to C3. I'm just going to highlight, copy and hit Control C. Highlight Control C, Control V to copy and paste. And then instead of blue, we can, uh, instead of red, we're going to go with a blue bike. So we can type it out. We can say blue or a nifty trick as well. I'm just going to undo here. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to hit Control F. So it asks us to find what I want red, red in this instance, and I want to replace it with blue. So I'm going to hit the replace tab here. I'm going to say blue, and I just highlight the selection that I want. And I'm going to say replace all. So if you tick this button, it's going to find our red, and it's going to change with blue. So it should change with free. Awesome. So that worked quite nicely. I'm going to Control C. And let's add in just another bike. So control V. So this is a blue, still the blue bike. I'm going to hit control F. I'm going to find blue. And let's change that with uh, our other primary color, yellow. I'm going to replace all. So that changes it quite nicely without us having to type it out. And let's say we also um, have some accessories that we sell. So I'm going to go with uh, accessories. 
and let's say we sell tubes we also got a tube tubes one as well as tubes two and we're going to apply the same logic it's going to control c control v and we're just going to control f again we're going to find tubes and let's say we and replace that we sell, we're selling tires as well so i'm going to find tubes and in our selection here replace all i'm going to have tires i'm going to highlight once again control c control v control f i'm going to replace tires with seats now we sell seats for the bikes as well i'm just going to hit the seats and i'm going to say replace so there we go nice little matrix i'm just going to make it cosmetically better here um going to give it a little border borders here i'm going to highlight our top row with a nice blue color and then we only want to show this as I'm just going to say no borders for this and I'm going to hit it for a nice outside border. I'm going to hit the format button here. We've got it on the left hand side. I'm going to format accessories the same. Exactly the same with the red box. So I just want this little button here. I can say no borders. I'm going to place a border here. I'm going to format. And what is nice is you can also hit that format button and highlight and replace it like this as well format and format there we go so this is a nice little matrix that we worked out for our combo box exercise so let's get into our vba this is where the fun starts so we're going to go into our developer tab here i'm going to go into the visual basic so this takes us into the visual basic interface and you will notice there's no nothing that we coded yet in this space of time. So I'm just going to right click on VBA project and I'm going to insert our user form and I'm just going to drag it out a little bit to give us some space. In the caption option, this user form one, I'm just going to take away the caption. I don't want the caption to show and I'm just going to highlight the user form and I'm going to choose a back color. Here in the back color op, uh, properties menu, I'm just going to give it a nice window background to give it a nice white background. So now we still start off with our first label. So you notice it populates it small. I'm going to go with caption and I'm going to say, uh, let's go with product category. Hit enter. So it changes it to product category here and I'm going to change the font. I always like to go with a century Gothic font. I'm just waiting for the properties to pop up here. There we go. So it defaults to Tahoma, but I'm going to go with uh, Century Gothic. I'm going to bold it out quite nicely and give us a nice 12 font size. So we can drag it out and just reshape it nicely here. I'm going to highlight the little uh, label. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V to create a duplicate. And remember, we also have a subcategory. So I'm just going to change category, product category to sub uh, product subcategory. So it's product subcategory. Hit enter. And you will see it cuts it off. So I'm just going to highlight every the, the, the every uh, label I've got going here. So I just hold in control and then I click on both of them and you can drag it out to reshape them simultaneously. All right, so I just wanna see here. I think I've got a, huh, I've already got a third label here that I control C and control V, so I'm just gonna use this one as well. There we go. And our final piece of the puzzle in our matrix was the product code. All right, product code, hit enter. So now we've got nice free labels and I'm also going to insert our button real quickly as well. So I'm going to go with a in image here. Just going to reshape our user form to fit the image. 
and I'm going to left click on the image and then here in the picture options where it says none I'm going to click on the ellipse button and it's going to take me to my pictures on my device so I'm going to go with my preloaded picture here so I've got a check and across here so please go to Google Images and download these uh, pictures that looks more or less the same as these and then I'm going to choose the cross picture here it zooms it in but it's a quick fix we just go to picture size mode and we choose the third option which says zoom and I'm also going to just take away that border so in border color I'm just going to drop down and choose the window background so that looks quite nice as well so guys I'm going to quickly go and uh, code this X button I'm going to double click on the X button remember it populates this weird code that you take out and I'm just going to replace that with click hit enter twice and we're going to say user form one dot hide so if we click that X button, we don't want to see that the first user form that we created, it hides it effectively. So I'm just going to double click back in our user form one, and now I'm going to physically put in our combo boxes. So you will see the fourth option in our toolbox bar. If you don't see the toolbox bar in the ribbon up top here, you can just click on the little toolbox button here. And on the left hand side, it should populate where you get this toolbox. The fourth option will be a combo box just click on that one and then you can it populates the combo box I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger and drag it out to make it a nice size for us and I'm also just gonna change the font so I left click on the combo box that we just put in and here at font populates to Tahoma I'm just gonna go with century gothic and I'm not going to bold it out, I'm going to use a nice 10 font and I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to, so this you will notice here in the, our properties tab, this is combo box 1. So I'm going to hit Control C, Control V. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to hit the, the, control, the combo box, Control C, Control V. So that gives us another combo box and that will give the name of this combo box is combo box 2. And we're going to place it below our first combo box and we're going to hit control v once again so this will populate our last combo box combo box free so in this exercise what is exciting with the vba uh, coding of the combo boxes we can make dependent combo boxes so depending on what our first combo box um, was chosen that will indicate our list that's populated in our second combo box so I'm going to show you exactly what I mean now. So first of all, I'm going to go uh, and we're going to go into our coding phase now. So I'm just going to double click on the user form, anywhere in the user form. So just double click here in a blank space. Now it populates the private sub user form click, but you can just highlight that. And here where it says click in the right upper hand side, it choose the drop down and we're going to go to activate the first option so that populates our new activate code you can highlight the user form click here and delete and you hit space twice so what needs to happen once the user form activates so we're going to go with combo combo box one dot add item so we want to add a item in this list so you just click on the add item and now we can choose what needs to be populated in that combo box so we're gonna go with sheets sheets then we use uh, the sign here the symbol here and then we say combo box menu combo box menu the reason for this is we you choose the name of the sheet that we created excuse me there we go there we go and we put it to a range as well so we say dot range and in the brackets you will say that and we're going to say with a2 
we hit that symbol once again and close the brackets. And we say dot value. So this means once it activates and we choose combo box one, the first list item that it will put in is what sheet combo box menu and in range A2 and we will take the value. So I'm going to tab through that. So in our spreadsheet that we created in the matrix, it will go to combo box menu, combo box menu dot range A2, A2. So that will populate bikes in our first combo box because we want to choose the product category in our first combo box. And then our next item will sit here accessories in A8. So we're going to just add that in. So I'm tabbing back into our user interface. I'm just going to highlight the code. Control C, hit space, uh, enter, and we say Control V. And we can literally just change this A2 to A8. So that will give us two options in our combo box, bikes and accessories. Now, this is where the fun starts as well, because now, depending if we choose bikes or accessories, then the second combo box that we put in, if we chose in bikes, it should only populate red bikes, blue bikes and yellow bikes, and not tubes, tires and seats. Only once we choose accessories in our first combo box, then it should show tubes, tires and seats. All right, so let's code that in as well. So now we go back to our user form, we double click on user form, and then we cl click on our first combo box. You literally left click on this combo box and double click. So that will populate this code here, combo box one underscore change. So if the first combo box changes, what needs to happen? And what that's what we're going to code now. So we're gonna say application, dot enable events enable enable events there we go you can just double click that and we're going to set that to false so we don't want anything else to change we're going to take that um, events that usually happen in our user box and we're going to disable that first of all we want our combo box to dot clear we want to clear our combo box and once that happens then we can highlight control uh, control c and i'm gonna say control v and then we're gonna say uh, application dot enable events dot true then we can go forward with this instance and we're gonna need space two times now we're gonna code in select case combo box one dot value so what this means is what is the case if the combo box one new value changes so our first case is if we can go back to sheets here we can go we can just say okay here you can highlight sheets the first option here sheets combo box menu dot range a2 dot value and we're going to just let literally the space here case and we're going to say control v so that set, sets the scene for our first case what needs to happen if our combo box one value is indeed bikes which we referenced here in a2 now we can add in a items so we can say combo box two dot value oh uh, sorry dot add item and we're going to go with sheets i'm just going to copy our first line here control c and we're going to add item i hit space control v so what needs to happen we go to combo box menu and our first category is a red bike in bike so we're going to put it to b2 so here in A2, we're going to say B2. And then subsequently the same with blue bikes in B4 and then yellow bikes in B6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight the code here, control C, going to hit space, control V, going to hit space once again, control V. So B2, B4 and 
B6. So that should code our second combo box. If we chosen bikes in our first combo box, now it will give us the options for red bikes, blue bikes, and yellow bikes. So that's our first case. So what's the second case? Our second case is accessories. So I'm just gonna highlight all the code here. Hit control C, space twice, control V, and now range A8, remember A8 was accessories, and then B8, 10, and 12 is our second subcategories that we need to put in. So we can say here it's B8 in our first line item here, B10 in our second line item, and in our third, B12. So that references if our combo box one is A8, so if it is accessories, then give us the third, these third options in combo box two. B8, which is tubes, B10, which is tires, and B12, which is seats. And you hit space twice, and we're gonna go with end select. There we go. And that's it, that's our, that's our second combo box coded quite nicely as well. And now we're gonna go with our third item as well. So we're gonna go back to user form one, and now I'm gonna double click on our combo box two. Remember combo box, our subcategory. I'm gonna double click on that. So that gives us the same as our previous code, combo box one change, but now it shows what needs to happen if the second combo box changes. So the same is true here. So we can highlight our three line items here at the top, control C, and we're gonna paste it in at control V at the second uh, combo box that changes. And we're just gonna change combo box two to combo box three that needs to clear in this instance. And now we're gonna go with the same uh, logic here. We're gonna say case or select case. We're gonna control V and now it's based on our second combo box value. It's based twice and now once again, we're gonna go with our control case here. So control C and we're gonna paste control V. So this is now nice. And now this means if we chosen red bikes, what needs to be populated in our third combo box? So obviously red bike one and red bike two needs to be populated. So this is B2. So if B2, I'm gonna change A2 to B2. And what needs to happen? Now we can insert a list. So we added items here in our second combo box. I'm gonna show you how to do a list now. So I'm gonna show you uh, to do combo box free dot list. So now we're not gonna add our item, we're gonna list items. We're gonna hit space and we're gonna go equals. So if we add an item, there's no equal sign. If there's a list, it, there is an equal sign. I'm just gonna copy, we're gonna say just say okay there. I'm just gonna copy this line item here, sheets in brackets combo box menu dot range b 2 dot value, control C. I'm gonna bring it down, space, control V. And now we're gonna show it a range. So if it's B2, if it's B2, we need to show C2 to C3. So we just in range, it's C2, show the symbol, and C3. And that's it. We're gonna double click that. We're gonna highlight our previous code, Control C and Control V. Now B2 is done, so if it's blue bikes, B4. B4, we need to change the range to C4 to C5. C4 to C5. Highlight once again, Control C, space twice. If it's B6, remember B6 
is yellow bikes, it needs to go to C6 to C7. So C4 becomes C6, C5 becomes C7. And then same applies with our accessories. It's based, uh, entered twice. If it's B8 tubes, B8, and then it becomes C8 to C10. So it becomes a C8 oh, to C9, sorry, C8 to C9. There we go. And once again, control C, hit that space, control V. If it's B10 tires, it becomes C10 to C11. Just going to tab it in. If it's tires in B10, it's C10 to C11. And our last one is seats. Just going to highlight once again. Hit space twice. If it's B12, so it's B12, this becomes C12 to C13. And our very last line item is end select. There we go. So that's our coding done. It was quite a mouthful, um, unfortunately, but this small piece of code is quite heavy and we're going to test it now out and see if it works. So last step is I'm just going to close the usual, the visual basic. I'm going to go to our home tab and here in our developer tab, I'm going to go with insert. I'm going to insert our active X control button here. There we go. And if you remember, um, it shows by default as command button one. You can just hit properties here. And we're just going to change the caption to, let's say, show combo box. We hit enter and close the properties. And we're going to double click on the code here. Hit enter twice. And we're just going to say user form one dot show. So we just want the, the first user form that we created to show. I'm going to hit exit. I'm going to exit design mode. So let's test our code now, guys. I'm very excited. Let's see if it works. So I'm just going to double click on our combo box. The combo box pops up. So that's step one done. Now, if we choose subcategory, we're going to go with our combo box. So there we go. We've got bikes. We've got accessories. So if we choose bikes and now in our subcategory, we're going to choose red bike, blue bike, yellow bike. It's not going to show the accessories because we haven't chosen any accessories. And if we choose red bike, now in product code, you can drop down and it shows red bike one, red bike two. Awesome. So it seems like it's working. Let's test it. Blue bike, blue bike one, blue bike two. Awesome. Yellow bike, yellow bike one, yellow bike two. Let's test our accessories. So in a product category, we're going to choose accessories. And now we've got tubes, tires, and seats. That's perfect. We're going to choose tubes, tube one and two, tires, tires one and two, seats, seats one and two. And we hit the X button, it closes the user form. Guys, this is quite beautiful stuff. And I'm so glad the code works for our first try. Um, I'm very glad you could tune in, guys. And I'm not going to leave you there. So we're going to take it a little step, uh, a step a little bit up for our next video. I'm just going to show you a little teaser here because I'm going to I'm going to put in some V lookups in that. You know what? I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave the teaser there for you. I'm going to put in V lookups within our combo boxes in our next video. Guys, you're going to like it. So, um, as I said, at the time of this recording, I've got 69 subscribers, which is nice. And um, if I can get to 80 subscribers, I'm going to leave this file that we just created for you in the descriptions below. Guys, always check, check out my first videos, which is also nice if you want to gain some knowledge. I was very glad to join you tonight. And guys, all the best from me, from Stone, from Accelerate. Cheers.